Apple really prides itself on its continuity features like universal clipboard or airdrop or Wi-Fi calling or personal hotspot, whatever it is. That's what Apple uses to trap users within their Apple ecosystem. So Apple has come back with another new continuity feature, this time building off Sidecar, a feature they released a couple years ago that allows you to use your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Universal Control, a feature that came in the latest iPad OS and Mac OS update. So let's take a look. First, what is Universal Control? Universal control is a feature that allows you to use your keyboard and mouse that is paired to your Mac and bridge it over to your iPad. Now this is a little bit different than Sidecar that you may be used to, where Sidecar was an option that allowed you to use your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac, which worked okay, but it was a little awkward, forced you to use the Apple Pencil, and it just wasn't overall the best experience. This whole time, Apple's trying to draw this fine line between keeping the Mac and the iPad two separate lines, while at the same time bridging some of their features and making them connect a little bit more each time. But Sidecar was their first attempt at this, being able to use your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac. But it, it was always a complicated solution. You had to use the Apple Pencil to control the screen, and you know it, it works as just an external monitor. But you know, wanting to do anything more with it was always a little bit tricky compared to just using a dedicated iPad app. Like if you're a Photoshop or Illustrator user, it just makes more sense. So let's first start by taking a look at how to enable the feature. To use Universal Control, you'll need a supported Mac or iPad. You can find a list of those on Apple's website. Your Mac will need to be updated to macOS Monterey 12.3 and your iPad to iPadOS 15.4. You'll also want to make sure that all your devices are signed into the same Apple ID and iCloud account and have two-factor authentication enabled. You also want to make sure that you are within 10 meters or 30 feet from each of your devices and have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and handoff all enabled on all of your devices. So you can start off on your Mac by going into System Preferences, uh, Displays, and you'll see that there's a new button here that says Universal Control. Clicking this will allow you to enable Universal Control as a beta feature as it still is now. So clicking here and you can click through all this stuff. So this will, the first one will allow you to use your cursor or mouse as a, and keyboard, let it move between your Mac and iPad. The second one allows you to push through the edge of a display to a connected nearby Mac or iPad. So this allows you to, you know, move the mouse between different devices and automatically reconnect anytime they're close by. So. We want to click done on all of that. And now we can hop over to the iPad, open settings, go to general handoff and enable cursor and keyboard. And once again, that's also the beta. So with that, I can click add display here on my Mac and I already see under link keyboard and mouse, Ralph's iPad Air 4, this iPad shows up as an additional option um, in addition to being able to use my iPad as to mirror or extend, which would be Sidecar that I referenced earlier. Um, so just gonna keep Ralph's iPad 4 here, so that's automatically enabled, or double click to re-enable it, um, and there it is. And then it, it pops up here as another monitor, so just like my screen over here is that one, this is my main monitor, and now here's my iPad off to the left, which is, in this case where my iPad is. But if my iPad were on the opposite side of my desk, say here in between the two other monitors, I could move this over here, over here. There it goes. So then I can go across one monitor, two monitor, and I'm on my iPad and all the way back across to the main monitor. But 
I'm going to keep it like this for now and move the screen back over. So now that it's here, notice I can easily, it's in the, my iPad is showing in the bottom left side of my main monitor. So if I move my mouse this way, it pops up down here on my iPad and I can use the cursor that's currently paired to my Mac. I can use it on my iPad just as if I were to natively pair this keyboard and mouse to the iPad. So I can come over here, use keyboard shortcuts like command space to open search, type in what I'm looking for like files for instance, and it opens the files app on my iPad. Now let's say I've got this document over here. Let's close out of system preferences. I got this pages document here called test. If I open it up, you know, it just says this is a test document. So let's say, you know, I'm starting to type over here, but now I want to switch over and start typing it on my iPad. And, you know, maybe I want to have Final Cut or something open on my desktop. So I can take the test.pages file and drag and drop it on my iPad. And notice it has a little green plus there and I can drop it in and there's that file now copied over to my iPad as if I was just moving it from one screen on my Mac to another screen on my Mac. So just as if I were opening this file on my Mac, I can open it right here on my iPad and it automatically opens in pages and I can, I'm already in edit mode so I can edit this document further and say, this is a test document that I'm that I'm editing on my iPad. So with files and pages and all that on the iPad, everything's saved. So I can click back here to go into files, click done. And if I go in here and preview, I can see that that last ending of the sentence I made is there. So now I can click and drag this around. So just like if you were on your iPad, you can select a file, drag it around, move it to you know somewhere else on your iPad, whether it be iCloud Drive, somewhere else, save locally on your iPad, etc., And you can drag and drop it on your Mac and open it up. And there is the edited document uh, where I added in that final sentence. Or let's say, let's go back over here to the iPad and we'll, we'll open Safari. If I open a new tab here and I've got appleguideweb.com here. And let's say I want to move this over here. Boom. Drop the address in the address bar on my iPad, click enter, and I'm at appleguideweb.com on my iPad seamlessly. So I was able to drag and drop text across different devices from my Mac to my iPad. Um, so now let's say I'm over here. I uh, notice here's another thing too that's bugging me, and it may be a beta problem. Whenever I'm scrolling on my iPad, it doesn't scroll here. The, the wheel feature on the mouse does not work with universal control on the iPad. A little bit annoying, but manageable. So you can just use your finger here. Um, and apparently, I guess if it scrolls, it just scrolls on the Mac. Still really annoying. But let's say, you know, we want to, I'm here on this website, my latest post here about how to stream your music and videos to your big screen or bigger speaker using AirPlay. If you want to know how to use AirPlay, that's a complete rundown. Every device, uh, supported device, every computer. If you want to know how to, you know, send your iPhone or iPad to the big screen, there is a guide for you. Anyway, so now if I'm, you know, reading this on my iPad, I have to use my finger to scroll because the other one doesn't want to work. Maybe I can do that. Oh, I could do that once it, the scroll bar comes up, but um, no wheel, no click wheel option. So I can come up here and I've got the link and I can drop it up there and it refreshes and there's the same article I was looking at here. So this is actually a pretty cool feature to be able to do this because I know there's a lot of times when I'm multitasking, for instance, um, I'm writing an article in Grammarly because that's why I used to spell check and everything. So while I'm, I, but I also reference the article while I'm editing the video, just because usually everything I do except for this video is all scripted. So it's, I can follow the script and know where I'm at in the video editing, know what's coming up and kind of get a feel on how things can go. But now I can have Safari open in one tab on, or one window or one, display connected to my Mac, Final Cut in another display on my Mac, and then use my iPad to run Grammarly. So I don't have to take up extra real estate space on my Mac, which 
would be great to be able to do that. And being able to work on files like I'm looking to do here feels way more intuitive than, you know, Sidecar did. Which, you know, while we're here, let's take a look at Sidecar and compare the differences. So the easiest way to do this is if I pop up here to Control Center, I can click the display setting here next to displays and you know what? They moved that option. So let's get back into display preferences and choose Ralph's iPad Air. I wonder if they're phasing out Sidecar. Hmm. Anyways, either way, once again, the iPad Air shows up as an additional monitor source on the wrong side. So we can click and drag this over. So now my cursor is over here and now my cursor is over here. And I can drag this window here or I can drag it back over here. And there's also a little bit of a lag too. But you know this, oh, and it just disconnected. So Sidecar may be on its way out, but I am really liking this universal control, even though it's apparently still in beta and the scroll wheel doesn't work. And I would love to see like a custom, uh, a customized buttons be able to work on the iPad and being able to program it just like you can if you were to um, pair this mouse to the iPad directly, which you can do, but you have to, with this mouse you can't do, but you have to change the source and then you have to change it every time you're going back and forth. Universal control just seems like a more seamless experience in solving this issue. And I look forward on seeing where it goes and if it's something I use in the future. But I think that's it for universal control, at least for now. I'm sure they'll um, adapt to more stuff later as more people use it and as they find a place for it. But hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you want, may want to uh, check out my other two videos I made about continuity features in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, there were so many that I had to make two videos on it. Um, great, if you wanna watch that, I'll link those below. Um, you can also read those articles on our website, appleguideweb.com, listen to those stories on our podcast, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Once again, all these links are below, along with our Patreon, where you can directly support the channel. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.